Hello, welcome to GeoAI tutorial number seven. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate geometric properties of objects detected using deep learning and uh, GeoAI. So if you're using deep learning, uh, you might be generating some mask. Uh, if it is geospatial data, we can convert the mask to vector. And sometimes we have to clean up the object because you might have some objects that are too small, they are too big. But besides that, uh, Sometimes we might need to filter the object based on the geometry. For example, if it is too long or is it too narrow or is it some kind of other criteria that you have. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the geometry properties just using one line of code uh, based on the vector data that you output from the GeoAI uh, package. So here is what it's going to look like. Assume this is the built-in detection output uh, from the GeoAI package. And now you can calculate the geometry properties, something like this. Right, so if you're in this area, uh, you can calculate the area uh, in meters, the length, the perimeter, bounding boxes, uh, major axis length, and also minor axis length. Also, eccentricity, orientation, elongation, extent, uh, solidity, and also complexity. So everything can be done just one line of code. And it's super useful because if you look at the detection result, something like this. Uh, for example, this one is not really a building. It's way too big, and also there's no building and beneath this one and we can actually filter the result similarly this one is just like a combination of a couple buildings it might not be ideal you might need to filter it out but simply based sometimes based on the size is not uh, enough so in this case we can use for example the elongation so it's like this too long then we can filter it out uh, if it's too small or is it too narrow like depends on the attributes of the object that you, uh, you're interested in then this additional geometry property can be very useful for you to fit out the object Okay, so this is the demo. Next, let's get into the uh, notebooks. So if you're interested in using this, go to the GeoAI uh, website. Link is also in the description below. And then click examples. Find the geometry properties uh, here. If you're interested in learning more about other tutorials, you can check out the YouTube channel. I have covered uh, from installation to downloading the data and also how to run the model extracting uh, buildings. So. Let's get started. So you can right click here, open this one in Google Colab. Then you can just uncomment this line and you can um, install the package. Then you should be able to run this uh, on Google Colab without installing anything on your computer. Since I already have this on my computer, I'm going to go to the very beginning here so that we can uh, start from the first uh, step. So the first, we're going to import the library. I already have this one installed so I can just import the library. After that, I'm going to download some sample data. So I have a sample data set from uh, hosting on Hugging Face. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, you just run this code block. So we have a vector data set, basically the building mask. We also have the raster imagery, basically the uh, high resolution area imagery used to detect the buildings. So now let's take a look at the vector data set. You can call the geoai.read vector and then passing the URL, you should be able to see uh, what the information contains within this polygon. It has the confidence column uh, indicating the confidence level ranging from 0 to 1. So the higher, the better, the lower, um, the uh, the worse. And, <coughs> excuse me. Then we can call the GeoAI uh, view vector interactive, passing the GeoData frame, and you can specify which column you want to create a map. And then you will add a color bar uh, in the top right corner here. You can also pass in the tiles, basically which one you want to use as the base map. So this is the original data. As you can see, the color ranging from um, blue to yellow. So the higher the better. So basically means this kind of relatively higher accuracy, uh, high confidence. And this one is actually pretty high, but it, it's the wrong result, result. You can also see other uh, attributes here. Right now, we only have two columns. The first one is the confidence. And the second one is the class. So the class is all one because they're all buildings, but the confidence level is going to be different. So this one is only point, um, point 0.5, similarly point 0.5. This is much higher, point 0.8. So how can we uh, filter the data set based on the accuracy? Similarly, this one is although it's very low, but it looks like a building, right? So here we're going to calculate the geometry property so we can filter those um, buildings that um, not really buildings, or it might be a like most buildings that's not a single building. Then 
because the buildings has minimum and maximum size, right? But normally, depends on the, uh, your area of interest. So once you have the geometry properties, we can filter using different criteria. What we can do is just call this one single function, geoai dot add geometry properties, passing the geodata frame, the original vector data, and you can specify the unit. If for small object, you might want to use uh, square meters. For large objects, um, you might want to use uh, kilometers, uh, square kilometers. So you can update this one if needed. Also the length units, same thing here, you can specify um, <coughs> meters or kilometers. Once you do the calculation, just run this one, you should be able to see all the outputs. Um, so all the attributes have been calculated and it's super fast. You will have these two uh, columns from the original data, confidence, class, and all these are the new one that we just added. So the area, square meter, now it's not just pixels because if you export data uh, from the deep learning models, most of the time it was just like how many pixels. And you need to convert this one, if this spatial data, you need to convert this one to area unit, right? So it's not just pixel, pixel multiplied by the spatial resolution square, then you get the number of pixel. But now we have this one directly calculated here. And the length, the length basically is the um, kind of similar to the perimeter, but sometimes you might have some built uh, object that with holes, then you also want to calculate the length of within the, the inner um, length and also the outer length. So the length sometimes might be longer than the uh, perimeter if you have some holes inside. Area, bounding box is square. So that means is the, the uh, let me show you here. Actually, this, <coughs> all the properties are similar to uh, the scikit-learn package. So this one basically shows you, you uh, what it looks like, right? So you might have an object and it's going to fit um, ellipse to the object and they also have the minimum bounding rectangle uh, on top of the object then you can calculate for example the bounding boxes how big is the bounding boxes and the object divided by the bounding boxes you're going to see what's the percentage occupied by this object so there are a bunch of other parameters uh, are available also the link is in the description below I guess, um, to the scikit-learn package here show you some of the geometry property that you can calculate for this but it's using the vector methods this is all raster but i directly calculate based on the geodata frame so you don't have to convert to raster and there are some a lot of parameters here if you want to learn more about the, what each one means you are welcome to come here and you click the link and then you can find all the properties uh, let me see one more hit one uh, if you click here um scikit image major properties right so you can calculate for example the area bounding boxes but these are all pixel based so how many pixels but we have converted to unit um spatial data area fill so if some of the objects have holes if you fill the the holes what's the area so it's going to be larger than the object slightly larger than the object itself the major axis length and also the minor axis length so basically it's this one uh, the length of this and this you can also calculate, for example, eccentricity. Eccentricity represents whether it looks like a circle or is it a square. If it's a circle, um, then it's zero, the value is zero. So eccentricity wants to range from zero to one. Also, you're gonna have uh, extend. And uh, there are a couple more. Uh, also elongation, uh, solidity, also the orientation. So the orientation would be something like this. So the angle of the major axis of the object so if the object is like pointing a certain direction you can also use this one to filter you can calculate a lot more uh, other attributes but this is just some of the example convex how few major minor eccentricity orientation elongation extent solidity and also complexity so with this attribute now we can actually visualize them we are going to use the same function view vector interactive now we can utilize the new uh, geodata frame with properties inside so in this case, we're going to use the area column. So we're going to basically create the map to showcase the size because earlier we only have the confidence. We don't really have the size. With this, right now, we have different colors. So the blue represents smaller area. Uh, the ye yellow color represents um, larger area. So now it's very clear. So if you're uh, criteria is that most of the buildings should be smaller than a certain size 
then you can just filter out. So if you hover your mouse, look at the area of this uh, object. So it's 2,487 square meters. It's probably too big. Similar to this one, over 3,000. This one, 1,600. And most of the buildings in this area, if you already know, right? So these are real buildings. It's only like 935, um, 800, right? 900. Most of them are smaller than 1,000. So if you if you only have a couple like large objects that are not really buildings, you can just select all the buildings. In this case, smaller than 1,000 square meters, then you remove those large buildings. We improved the deep learning algorithm to improve that right now, just showing you some back examples of the building detection from the deep learning algorithm. So again, now it's very clear. So you know what size you need to use. Without the geometry properties, it's hard to tell, right? Because you, you don't really have the size. You don't have the number of pixels. But now with this, we can do that easily. So this is one way if you can, if you want to filter the object by size or you can also filter by elongation. So the elongation basically is the um, major axis length divided by the um, minor axis length. So here, if you look at this example, very much similar, B size lows right now, we also have this have high elongation values. So that means it's the, the, the length divided by the width. So here, the elongation is 6.27. So it's pretty long. The most of the building will not have it this long, but this is like um, three, maybe three or four is normal, but it's the building is very, way too long. Then it's something abnormal. Similarly, this one is 3.9. So it's way too long. And this one, the elongation is uh, what? 8.8. 8. This one is 5.2, right? There are also some smaller buildings. For example, somewhere here, these are also high values. Look at this one. 3.3 .3. and there are some small artifacts around this again we improve the deep learning algorithm this is just the initial result uh, similarly this one right it's not very good it's the tiny objects detected somewhere here it's not supposed to be an entire building so elongation for example is close to 5.5 .5. and we can set a threshold maybe elongation greater than 4 and then you should be able to remove all of these um, small tiny objects but you might also extend to remove some of this because this one is 6.27 so you might need to use multiple criteria um it is smaller than a certain size and also it's very long it's more less likely to be um, buildings <laughs> with this now we can filter the object so we are going to use this criteria and because most of the buildings are smaller than 1000 or 2000 so we're going to set a threshold um areas less than all the buildings the area must be less than 2000 square meters and also the elongation must be less than five. So in this way, we restrict the um, uh, number of buildings to just small buildings and also not super long buildings. Before I do that, maybe we can just print out how many buildings in the original uh, data frame. So length, GDF, run. So we have 688 buildings. Let's run this one. And let's see how many buildings are left. So here, on this one, 679. So we remove maybe um, nine buildings. It's not a lot, but I mean, depends on the area, depends on the data, it might be very different. Once you have uh, filtered the data, now we can take a look at the final result. So as you can see here, we, we already removed the buildings here. Now that one is gone, this one is gone, this one is gone. Of course, we have some missing buildings here. We improve it later. And this one is still here. It, it's, it, we need some additional criteria to remove some of these. For example, you can have the area uh, the um, area compared to the convex hull or the bounding boxes. We later we'll be able to remove this one as well. And there's some also some artifacts. Um, we will improve it later. But at least right now you can have a simple way of calculating the geometry properties of any vector data. So. All you need is input just a geodata frame. It doesn't have to be actually building detected from deep learning. It can be anything. So you already have some um, vector data from somewhere, and then you want to maybe calculate something based on the geometry properties and then filter the data. This can be very useful. All you need is just call this function add geometry uh, properties. Then you should have that one uh, ready to go. So let me show you here one more time. 
view interactive yeah just one line called geoai to add geometry property and then passing the data frame specify oh you know, by the way you can specify which property you want to calculate if these are too many uh, you don't need all of them you can just provide a list of property names for example you just need the area and the length uh, then you can just area underscore square you can look at all the list of all the attribute available here just passing the list and if not it's going to if you don't provide it's going to calculate all the available um not all the available here so also has the um the same choice and also the bounding boxes so this i didn't include them for example the central x coordinates the y the bounding boxes so those are some additional attributes if you want to calculate uh, you can do that uh, as well okay so that's all for this uh, tutorial i hope you find it useful i will see you in the next one